Hi guys, my name is Jamil Ahmed and as you know that we were discussing about the transcription and we were discussing about the replication, gene expression and in gene expression two things, first one is the transcription and second is the translation. So now we were discussing about the transcription and in the previous lectures we were discussing about uh, a transcription, prokaryotic transcription and in this lecture today we are going to explain production of eukaryotic messenger RNA or we can say that eukaryotic transcription. So first I am going to revise you the definition of transcription. So what is the definition of transcription? The production of RNA by using DNA with the help of RNA polymerase is called transcription. So in prokaryotes, prokaryotic messenger RNA, prokaryotic RNA will be formed, will be synthesized from DNA with the help of RNA polymerase and in eukaryotic transcription, the eukaryotic RNA will be synthesized with the help of RNA polymerase 2 by using DNA as a template. Okay, so now in this lecture, we will discuss about the production of eukaryotic messenger RNA means that how messenger RNA, RNA is produced in eukaryotes by using DNA as a template with the help of RNA polymerase enzyme. So the first thing, the following events occur in eukaryotic transcription. Okay, so the first thing you must know that as you know that in prokaryotes, only one RNA polymerase, only one RNA polymerase causes the transcription and formation of uh, RNA polymerase. You know that uh, in uh, prokaryotes, in prokaryotes, only one same RNA polymerase causes transcription and formation of all types of RNA, either it is a transfer RNA, either it is a ribosomal RNA or it is a messenger RNA. The only one RNA polymerase will cause the synthesis of all types of RNA. But in case of production of eukaryotic messenger RNA, well, sorry, but in case of eukaryotic transcription, you know that RNA polymerase, so the synthesis of so the synthesis of messenger RNA happens with the help of RNA polymerase 2. So RNA, RNA polymerase 2 enzyme causes the transcription, uh, causes the formation synthesis of messenger RNA. So uh, uh, RNA polymerase 1 will cause the synthesis of another type of, uh, another type of RNA, uh, another RNA polymerase 3, 3 will cause the synthesis of another type of RNA. But messenger RNA is produced from RNA polymerase 2 and and you know that only messenger RNA is the uh, is the form of RNA which is going to be translated okay which is going to be translated which is going to form the amino acids it's going to form the proteins so now we will move on so now yeah, you must remember that RNA polymerase 2 causes the synthesis of messenger RNA so next we will move on that the next point that with the help of transcription factor RNA polymerase 2 will bind to promoter. First you must know that what is the promoter. So first you must know that what is the promoter then we will move on. So the promoter is the you know that I have uh, already explained that promoter is just like a airport. So let's suppose that it's a DNA strand. So airport a uh, 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 promoter is just like a airport. So now this uh, RNA polymerase will come and it will land on promoter and it will cause the transcription of the strand. So this promoter, so this is the promoter, this is the region. So this is, this, this will act just like an airport. So RNA polymerase, RNA polymerase, RNA polymerase 2 in this time, uh, RNA polymerase 2 will recognize the promoter and it will land on the promoter and it will cause the transcription of DNA strand and it will form the messenger RNA. Okay, but first this promoter, the promoter in eukaryotic transcription consists of two sequences. The first one is the Hognes box and second one is the sort box. So what is the Hognes box and what is the sort box? First we must know that what is the Hognes box and what is the sort box? the if we talk about the Hognes box the Hognes box second name is also Goldberg Hognes box what is second name Goldberg Goldberg Hognes box and it is also called Tata box it is also called Tata box it consists of the uh, Tata sequences of 
uh, basis. Uh, okay, so it is also called Goldberg Ho Hognes box, or is it, it is also called Tata box. And the second thing that what is the location of Hognes box on per motor? The location of Hognes box is 25 to 35 upstream. 25 to 35 upstream so it is 25 to 35 base pairs upstream from transcription start point so what is the location of hognes box it is 25 to 35 upstream and you know that what is the upstream if we take the promoter if we take the start point as a reference then anything which is on the coding stand then anything which is on the left side that is the upstream and anything which is on the right side that is the uh, uh, that is the upstream that is the downstream okay so now so now uh, what is the location of hognes box the location of hognes box is 25 to 35 upstream mean that if we take the start point as a reference uh, if we take the start point uh, uh, start point plus one side at uh, a start point if we take the start point as a reference then any side anything which is on the left side that is the upstream so hognes box is upstream on the left side of the start point and what is that location that location is 25 to 35 base pairs upstream so now second thing that what is the function of hognes box what is the function of hognes box this hognes box help the rna polymerase to start the transcription okay so it helps the rna polymerase to recognize the start point so promoter identifies or we can say that Hognes box identified the start point and arranged RNA polymerase on template strand. So this was about the Hognes box. And second that, what is the sort box? The sort box, the sort box consists of the bases that is the GG, CC, AA and TCT. This sequence of base pairs is called sort box. So next thing that what is the location of sort box the location of sort box is 60 to 100 base pairs upstream from start port again so you can see that here that this one is the tata box and this one is the sort box okay so this one is the sort box and this one is the uh, sorry this one is the tata box and this one is the sort box you can see that this is a minus 70 minus 70 mean that it is 60 to 70 up, uh, upstream and uh, sorry minus mean that upstream and 60 to 7 mean that it is base pairs and minus mean that upstairs up, upstream and next hognes box same that you can see that 25 to 35 and mean that 25 mean that base pairs and minus mean that it is upstream okay so now what is the function of sort box the function of sort box that this sort box will send the signals to these transcription factors to these transcription factors and then these transcription factors will come and they will bind with hognes box okay so now i am going to explain i think now this is understandable for you what is the function of sort box the function i am going to explain i am going to explain that with the help of transcription factor rna polymerase 2 will bind to promoter and promoter identifies the start point and arrange rna polymerase 2 on the template stand and then rna polymerase 2 will start transcription so mean that now i am going to explain that how transcription initiation happens in eukaryotes now i think it's understandable for you about hognes box and about sort box now i am going to explain these all three points in there uh, all three points here so now basically what happens first you must know that what are so now i think the world uh, promoter it's about hognes box and sort box mean that uh, how many sequence of promoter in eukaryotic transcription in eukaryotic dna and what is uh, and the second thing that why i have used the uh, world rna polymerase 2 in eukaryotic transcription in production of messenger rna i think these two concepts are understandable for you the first one that the promoter has two sequences first one is the hognes box and second is the sort box in eukaryotic transcription hognes box mean that tata box and it is 25 to 35 upstream from start point of transcription and third thing about hognes box that its function is that it helps rna polymerase uh, 
for identification of the start point and arrange the RNA polymerase on template stand to continue the transcription and if we talk about the second sequence on the promoter that is about the sort box that consists of the GG, CC, AA, T, C, T these are the base pair sequence on the sort box and it is 60 to 100 base pairs upstream from start point as you can see that this is a minus 70 mean that 70 base pairs upstream from start point it's about sort box and when we talk about the Tata box it's about Hognes box it is 25 base pairs upstream from start point and its function what is the function of sort box the sort box uh, signals the transcription factors uh, in, ne in the next point we will discuss about the transcription factors the sort box signals to transcriptors uh, transcription factors to join with the Hognes box for the identification of the start point okay so now first we must know that what are the transcription factors after uh, getting the concept of transcription factors we will be able to study about the eukaryotic transcription initiation elongation and termination okay first we are going to uh, uh, get the concept about transcription factors so what are the transcription factors we indicate the transcription factors as you can say that uh, in the uh, transcription factors are indicated by uh, we can write transcription factor in a short form like this transcription uh, from transcription T and from factor F transcription factor after that we put the 2 as transcription factor for RNA polymerase 2 enzyme because this enzyme is RNA polymerase 2 therefore we will put the transcription factor 2 and after that there are many transcription factor on the base of their function and these transcription factors are A, B, D, E, F and H so these are the different transcription factors so uh, we will give the name transcription factors on this base that transcription factor 2 because it is for RNA polymerase 2 enzyme and then on the base of the on the base of their function there are different transcription factors we can say that transcription factor 2a transcription factor 2b transcription factor 2d transcription factor 2e transcription factor 2h and transcription factor 2f so now this is the naming that how we give the name to transcription factors transcription factors in short form but the question arises that what are the transcription factors so first we must know that what are transcription factors these transcription factors are group of proteins the transcription factors are the different group of proteins such like that if if they, they, here is a promoter here is a promoter then the promoter has two sequences sort box and tata box then these transcription factors are group of proteins so these are group of proteins uh, sorry i would i would like to write here that these are the group of proteins okay group of proteins which are joined together and they will form the transcription factors and these group of proteins these transcription factors has dna binding domains so these are uh, transcription factors these transcription factors are uh, uh, proteins basically these are proteins and these proteins has dna binding domains and with the help of these domains these group of proteins these transcription factors with the help of these domains they will they will attach they will uh, they will go and they will attach with the promoter with the help of these dna binding domains and they will help the rna polymerase to start the transcription okay so now i think you have understand that what is the transcription factor these are group of proteins which have dna binding domains with the help of these binding domains they will go and bind with the promoter region and they will help rna polymerase to start transcription and the second thing that transcription factor we will give the transcription factors we will give the name to transcription factors in this way so now i think uh, these concepts are understandable for you that uh, what is promoter and how many sequence of promoter in eukaryotic transcription what are the transcription factors and then after that i why i have used the word rna polymerase 2 in the product production of eukaryotic messenger rna because as we have uh, discussed in the previous lectures that uh, in eukaryotes messenger rna is produced by special enzyme a special rna polymerase enzyme type that is rna polymerase 2 therefore i have used the term rna polymerase 2 for the synthesis of messenger rna so now we will move on that how this eukaryotic uh, initiation happens and after that 
how eukaryotic inauguration happens and after that how eukaryotic termination happens then after that at the end of the day at the end of the lecture we will discuss about that what is the difference between eukaryotic transcription and prokaryotic transcriptions okay so now first we will discuss about the eukaryotic uh, uh, transcription initiation that helps please uh, we will discuss the point from here to until here okay so we are going to discuss this point in the form of i am going to explain it in the form of a little bit figure so let's suppose that this is the so explain here so let's suppose that this is the dna double molecule so this is a dna double molecule 3 prime to 5 prime template strand and this is the coding strand 5 prime to 3 prime okay so first of all what happens as you can see that that here is a two promo, uh, two promoter sequences first one is the tata box and second one is the sort box so let's suppose that if we take at the reference point then let's suppose that here is a uh, tata box here is a tata box and here is the sort box okay sort box so now really what happens this is a tata box and this is a sort box now really what happens now really what happens now the first of all the transcription factor 2d first one which one transcription factor 2d so transcription factor uh, 2d transcription factor 2d so this is a transcription factor so this sort box so what is the function of sort box i have explained earlier that the function of sort box that sort box will give the signals to transcription factors and then these transcription factors will attach to the tata box okay so now this sort box will send the signal to transcription factor 2d and when it will get the signal then it will come and it will bind with the tata box so now transcription factor 2d will come and it will bind it will join it will attach with the tata box but with the help of special proteins these proteins are called tata binding proteins so these proteins are called tata binding proteins okay so the first thing that first of all transcription factor 2d when will get the signal from sort box then it will come and it will bind it will attached with the tata box with the help of tata binding proteins so transcription factor 2d has tata binding proteins with the help of these proteins this way they will attach with the tata box when they will get the signal from sort box so this attachment of transcription factor 2d will cause the bending of uh, bending of dna double strand molecule by 80 degree centigrade so now this will bend this dna molecule will bend by 80 degree centigrade in this way okay so this this will move in 80 degree centigrade this will bend in 80 degree centigrade so this attachment of transcription factor 2d will cause the bending of uh, dna double strand by 80 degree centigrade the next point about the transcription factor we are talking about the initiation that how initiation happens the first step that transcription factor 2d will attach with the tata box when sort box will send the signal to transcription factor 2d to attach with the tata box so now this bending will cause the attachment of further two transcription factors these two transcription factors are transcription factor 2a so first transcription factor 2a will come and it will also attach with the tata box so transcription factor 2a and and the transcription factor that names transcription factor 2b so these both transcription factor will come and will attach with the tata box but when when this bending will happen so this bending will cause the attachment of further two transcription factors that are transcription factor 2a and transcription factor 2b so now what are the function of these transcription factors 2a and 2b the function of transcription factor 2a so when transcription factor 2a will come and it will bind with the tata box then it will cause the further stabilization but further stabilization of the binding of the bond between this transcription factor 2d and tata box so when transcription factor 2a it will cause the further stabilization of the bond between transcription factor 2d and tata box and the next thing that what is the what is the function of transcription factor 2b so transcription factor 2d will cause the recruitment it will cause the lining of rna polymerase on the tata box on the dna strand on the promoter so this is a promoter so transcription factor 2b will cause the recruitment will cause the landing of rna polymerase 2 
so let's suppose that now here is a r and a polymerase 2 okay it's c terminal or we can say that it's a it's a tail and we can say that this is a r and a r and a polymerase 2 so this transcription factor 2b will cause the landing or recruitment of rna polymerase 2 on the promoter but the next thing that it will cause the recruitment but rna polymerase 2 will not land itself on the promoter then and the transcription factor and the transcription factor that named transcription factor f so now transcription factor f will go and it will bind with this rna polymerase transcription factor 2f so now this transcription factor 2f will go and it will bind with the rna polymerase 2 and it will cause the now it will cause the landing of rna polymerase 2 on the promoter region but this transcription factor 2 uh, so now this transcription factor 2 uh, 2 f will cause the landing of this rna polymerase so now this rna polymerase will come and it will land on it okay it's a c terminal and now this transcription factor 2 f transcription factor 2 f will cause the landing of this rna polymerase on the ed and uh, on the promoter so now for this landing the transcription factor 2f the transcription factor 2f will get help will get help from transcription factor 2b and it will also get help from the transcription factor 2d so it will get the help from transcription factor 2b and it will get the help from tata binding proteins for the landing of rna polymerase 2 on the promoter now this uh, rna polymerase has been landed on the promoter so now this rna polymerase wants to start the transcription but still transcription will not start but why because this uh, transcription factor 2b this transcription sorry transcription factor 2f the transcription factor 2f will protect the contact of rna polymerase 2 with the dna so it will protect the contact of rna polymerase with the dna and it will say the polymerase rna polymerase 2 that still wait and don't need to start the transcription so transcription will not start so how many transcription factors are added the first one is the 2d 2a 2b and 2f so four transcriptions are added this whole complex this whole complex now is called pre-initiation complex so this whole complex is called pre-initiation complex so now after the pre-initiation complex the transcription factor 2e will come now transcription factor 2e will come and transcription factor 2e will come and it will bind with this pre-initiation complex so now here will come the transcription factor 2f transcription factor 2e uh, 2e will come and it will bind with transcription fact uh, with pre-initiation complex so this binding of transcription 2e with the pre-initiation complex helps the landing of another transcription factor that is the transcription factor h so now at the end of the day at the end transcription factor 2h will come so now here is the main role of transcription factor 2h transcription factor 2h is a big uh, transcription factor it consists of the nine proteins okay it consists of the nine proteins the two are uh, transcription factor 2h so now this transcription factor 2h has two set of proteins has two set of proteins one set consists of the seven proteins and second set consists consist of the two proteins so it consists of the two set the first one consists of the two uh, two proteins and second consists of the seven proteins so these two proteins have the activity of atp 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 is activity it has atp is activity mean that it will use the atp and it has activity of helicase okay so now this uh, these are two 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 proteins are atp is activity they will use the atp and they will act as a helicase so what is the function of helicase it will cause the unwinding of dna double strand so now dna double strand will be unwinded it will be say it will be separated into single strands so now this strand will be unwinded and second set consists of the seven proteins these have the kinase activity so kinase activity these seven uh, proteins was well, the second set that consists of the seven proteins it has the kinase activity and what is the function of kinase you know that the kinase enzyme causes the phosphorylation it causes the 
phosphorylation. So now this phosphorylation, uh, so, uh, this kinase activity causes the phosphorylation of tail or C terminal of the RNA polymerase 2. So this phosphorylation of RNA polymerase 2 on the tail side will cause, uh, 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 will say to transcription, uh, will say to RNA polymerase 2 to start the transcription. So in this way, then this uh, RNA polymerase 2 will start the transcription at plus one site. So I think now this concept is understandable for you that first sort box, sort box will send the signal to transcription factor 2D, then transcription factor 2D will bind with the Tata box with the help of transcription uh, Tata binding proteins. This binding will cause the DNA to bend by 80 degrees centigrade. This bending helps for the landing up for the two transcription factors that are transcription factor A and transcription factor 2A and transcription factor 2B. What is the function of transcription factor 2A? The transcription factor 2A causes the further stabilization of the bond between Tata binding proteins and Tata box. And then what is the function of transcription? And second one is the transcription factor 2B. So what is the function of transcription factor 2B? The transcription factor 2B will help of landing of RNA polymerase 2 on promoter. But this RNA polymerase 2 will not land on itself on the promoter then and the transcription factor 2F will attach with the RNA polymerase 2 and this transcription factor 2F will contact with this uh, transcription factor 2B uh, bond between uh, uh, transcription factor 2D and Tata box and it will contact also with the transcription factor 2B and then it will cause the landing of this RNA polymerase 2A, uh, RNA polymerase 2 on the promoter. So now this RNA polymerase 2 wants to start the transcription but uh, another function of transcription factor 2F that it prevents the contact of RNA polymerase 2 with the DNA so it says the RNA polymerase 2 that still stop still don't need to start the transcription. Then this hole is called pre-initiation complex. Then a transcription factor 2E comes and it attached with the pre-initiation complex. So this attachment causes the landing of and the transcription factor that is the transcription factor 2H. So now the transcription factor 2H will come and it consists of the two sets. First set consists of the two proteins and say second set consists of the seven proteins. The two uh, the set which consists of the two proteins that has ATP's activity means that it has helicase activity. It will use the ATP and it has helicase activity it will unwind the double strand of the DNA and second has the second set consists of the seven proteins and it has kinase activity mean that it will cause the phosphorylation of C terminal or a tail of the RNA polymerase 2 this phosphorylation will will cause the uh, will say, uh, this, this, this phosphorylation will say the RNA polymerase 2 to start the transcription so now the transcription will start at plus one side so this is the whole concept that with the help of transcription factor with the help of these uh, six transcription factor RNA polymerase 2 will bind to promoter so it will come and it will bind up to promoter and Hognes box mean the Tata box and sort box what is the role of Hognes box and sort box in this and after that it will bind to the promoter then promoter identifies the sort point and arrange RNA polymerase 2 on the template stand so when transcription factors will uh, will cause the landing of this RNA polymerase 2 on the promoter then the sort box and Tata box with the help of this transcription factor will cause the will cause the identification of start point and arrange the RNA polymerase on template strand. A template strand that is going to be transcribed from 3' prime to 5' prime end. So now after that RNA polymerase 2 will start transcription at plus one side but with the help of these transcription factors and promoter which has two box, data box and sort box. So it was all about the, so it was all about the transcription initiation. I think now this concept is clear for you. Now we will move on about the a transcription elongation please please I would like to give you a concept about remember this concept that first transcription 2D will come after that 2A will come after that 2B will come after that 2F will come after that 2E will come after that 2H will come this is very difficult to remember that I have one formula to remember this concept you can remember this concept by that the dog eats the apple so I am going to write that concept that the dog eats apple and plays football and get tired and 
sits in front of fan in front of fan and then he sees elephant and run away to in the helicopter and run away in the helicopter in the helicopter okay so now the first one the dog eats apple you can remember dog the transcription factor 2d from dog transcription factor 2d as you can see that first of all transcription factor 2d comes and after that eats apple after that transcription factor 2a will come to bind with the tota box after that and plays football b then after the transcription factor 2b will come and after that he get tired and sits in front of fan so fan f then after that at number 4 the transcription factor 2f will come then after that it will hold is called the pre initiation complex then the uh, and sits in front of fan and when he sees elephant e e means transcription factor 2e so now transcription factor 2e will come and it will bind with the pre initiation complex then after that it runs away in the helicopter helicopter h transcription factor 2h so transcription factor 2h it's just like a helicopter it will come at the end of the at the end of the uh, at the end of the day and this helicopter will move on mean that it will start the transcription okay so now i think this concept is understandable for you and by this remember by this formula you can remember that how this transcription initiation happens so now we will discuss about the transcription elongation in eukaryotes so now transcription elongation how transcription elongation happens so now we are going to discuss about transcription elongation So now, transcri uh, now transcription elongation happens with the help of two enzymes. The first one is the transcription uh, factor E B, and second is the transcription factor two S. So there are two uh, transcription factor: transcription factor E B and transcription factor two S. So what is the function of these? How these transcription factor causes the elongation of transcription in eukaryotes? The first one we are going to discuss about the transcription factor E B. The transcription factor E B causes the phosphorylation of C terminal. Let's suppose that let's suppose that this is the DNA double strand. Uh, this is a DNA double strand, and uh, with the help of transcription factors, here is a uh, uh, RNA polymerase two, and uh, this is a TC C terminal, and C terminal this is RNA polymerase two, and it is moving on, and it is uh, no uh, transcription has been started. So transcription has been started with the help of transcription factors. So after that, how elongation happens? Then this transcription factor E B will come, and it will cause the further phosphorylation of this tail or C terminal of RNA polymerase two, and further phosphorylation of the C terminal of RNA polymerase two will cause the elongation of transcription so in this way elongation will happen okay so in the second concept the second concept that it is about transcription factor 2s so what is the transcription factor 2s the transcription factor 2s as the name indicate s s means smooth s means smooth so what is the concept the concept first you must know that in the eukaryotic transcription the transcription is not smooth at all it is fast at some points the RNA polymerase will cause the fast transcription at some points and it will cause the slow transcription at some points but what is the function of transcription factor 2s it will cause the smooth transcription eukaryotic transcription on dna it will come and it will say to the rna polymerase 2 that don't keep this transcription slow or fast it will say to transcription factor you must keep this transcription in a smooth way so this will keep the transcription in a smooth way and transcription 2b will cause the further phosphorylation so in this way elongation will happen okay so now i think this concept is also understandable for you that how elongation happens but the, after that transcription factor started in elongation the rna polymerase 2 will read the template strand from 3 prime to 5 prime this is uh, easy and understandable for you i have explained in the previous lectures and it will synthesize the messenger rna and it will synthesize the rna in 5 prime to 3 prime and here i have write that this will synthesize the messenger RNA, uh, not messenger RNA, I have write the pre-messenger RNA or primary transcript. It means that still here is a pre-messenger RNA, it is not a mature messenger RNA, okay? It is immature messenger RNA. We will discuss about this concept little bit later in this lecture. So now elongation has happened. Now after that, after elongation, 
and here I have write the nth concept that uh, during elongation both exons and introns are transcribed mean that both exons and introns both introns and exons both will be transcribed to the messenger RNA as you know that eukaryotic uh, eukaryotic transcription have both introns and exons eukaryotic DNA has both introns and exons then these both will be transcribed in the messenger RNA so okay so now how then RNA polymerase 2 ends transcription at termination signal but not well understand yet mean that it says that eukaryotic transcription uh, 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 termination of eukaryotic transcription is still not yet understood but I have some concepts I have some concepts what are these concepts it says that it says that here is a one stimulation factor that is the cleavage stimulation factor I, I will write it cleavage stimulation factor cleavage stimulation uh, factor So this is the cleavage, uh, cleavage. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Cleavage stimulation, uh, stimulation factor. So it is the cleavage stimulation factor. So what happens? Not really. What happens? That if suppose that this is the DNA double strand. So on DNA double strand here is a RNA polymerase two, and it it's a, it is its tails, and it is going uh, uh, transcribe the DNA strand. It is forming the RNA. So it, this is the messenger RNA. And this is the double stranded DNA and this is the RNA polymerase so when this RNA polymerase will uh, will reach at the end of the gene so let's suppose that this is the whole gene so when it will this is the gene which is going to be transcribed so now this RNA polymerase has transcribed the whole gene now this uh, RNA polymerase has reach at the end of the gene so now this is the transcription termination signal so how this uh, uh, happens when this the RNA polymerase will reach at the end of the its tail which reach at the end of the gene which is going to be transcribed mean that when whole gene is, has been transcribed and and after that this RNA polymerase will have one factor that is called the cleavage stimulation factor at its tail so if this is a tail of RNA polymerase 2 it has the cleavage stimulation factor this cleavage stimulation factor will cause the cut of this RNA from DNA so in this way this RNA will be separated and termination will happen so I think this concept is understandable for you I would like to repeat this concept that how termination happens that when uh, this RNA polymerase 2 reach at the end of the gene mean that when transcription of specific gene has happened then when tail uh, when tail of RNA polymerase 2 reach at the end of the gene then the, the tail of RNA polymerase 2 has cleavage stimulation factor then this cleavage stimulation factor will cut the messenger RNA from DNA so uh, because uh, DNA and messenger RNA are both hybrid when this uh, uh, RNA polymerase uh, 2 will uh, reach at the end of the gene then it this cleavage uh, stimulating factor which is present on the tail of the RNA polymerase 2 it will cut the messenger RNA and in this messenger RNA will be separated and in this way transcription termination will happen in the book it's been written that that's, that's not well understandable yet but I have some concepts about this uh, uh, eukaryotic uh, eukaryotic transcription termination these concepts are these okay so now this was about the uh, eukaryotic transcription initiation eukaryotic transcription elongation and eukaryotic transcription termination so now we will discuss about the some difference between the eukaryotic transcription and prokaryotic transcription the first, first first concept says that the eukaryotic transcription is monocystronic transcription what do you mean by that monocystronic transcription as we have explained in the previous lecture about prokaryotic transcription that that is the polycystronic transcription polycystronic transcription mean that we have read in poly cystronic transcription okay so what you mean by polycystronic transcription polycystronic transcription mean that only one promoter there will be the only one promoter uh, and uh, only one terminator only one promoter and only one terminator and between the promoter and terminator there will be the many genes so many genes will be transcribed into RNA but just with the help of one promoter and one terminator and these many genes will be terminate will be transcribed into a uh, pre messenger rna and again because many genes are tra translated uh, many genes are transcribed then many genes are translated into many amino acids uh, many uh, messenger rna are translated into proteins 
this was about the polycystonic transcription that was in the prokaryotes but now we will discuss about the eukaryotes eukaryotes is monocystonic transcription it says that it says that it says that each gene is more widely spaced mean that here is a if this is a dna double strand and dna double strand molecule has many 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 genes and these genes if here is a one gene here is a another gene here is a third gene fourth gene these genes are spaced from each other they are there are they uh, they are widely spaced from each other because of widely spaced each gene has its own promoter and each gene has its own terminator because they are far away from each other therefore each gene has its own promoter and each gene has its own terminator therefore they are monocystronic they have single promoter for each gene there is a own promoter and there they have uh, each gene has its own terminator okay so in this way only single gene will be transcribed into messenger rna and only single messenger rna is transcribed uh, is, is translated into proteins so only single gene will be uh, transcribed and only single gene will be translated into proteins but in case of polycystonic there may be the many genes are transcribed together so many information about proteins and messenger rna and many proteins are formed from single messenger rna but in this case only one gene is transcribed so only one inf uh, so information on the messenger rna it's about only one kind of protein so only one kind of proteins will be formed and the second thing says that information is fragmented into exons and introns so now i would like to give uh, i would like to explain about introns and exons as you have seen as you have saw in the prokaryotic transcription that information was just about exons there were introns was missing as you know that introns are the intervening segments or we can say that non coding segments and exons are expressed segments or we can say that these are the coding segments so these are the coding segments and these are the intervening non coding segments so now the uh, information is fragmented into exons and introns you can see that here is the exon intron exon intron as, as you can say that exon intron exon intron exon intron mean that exon are expressed these are coating region these exons have information about proteins but these introns have no information about proteins so information is fragmented into exons and introns in eukaryotes not in prokaryotes in prokaryotes introns are missing only exons so but in this case information is fragmented exons which have information about proteins but introns have no proteins so exons are interrupted by introns that are non coding region so maturation will happen of pre messenger rna until here because it has exons and introns it is called the pre messenger rna it is the immature messenger rna it is not a mature messenger rna so maturation will happen and this pre messenger rna will be changed into mature messenger rna but how the maturation will happen and these introns will be cut off these introns will be cut off and then after that these exons will join together when these exons will join together then after that this will called the mature messenger rna and after that this mature messenger rna will go and it will bind with the ribosome because now this mature messenger rna is being formed in nucleus in nucleus and after that it will move outside of the nucleus and it will goes in the cytoplasm and it cytoplasm there are ribosomes so ribosomes a messenger rna mature messenger rna will bind with the ribosomes and this ribosome now will translate the messenger rna it will translate the messenger rna from 5 prime to 3 prime in prime prime to 3 prime in and it will form the proteins from nh2 ch uh, uh, from amino to carboxyl End. so now this messenger rna is now this is the mature messenger rna at the first was premature uh, immature now this is the mature messenger rna and it will go and uh, mature messenger rna will go and uh, ribosomes will bind with messenger rna and will cause the translation of messenger rna from 5 prime to 3 prime end and they will form the proteins from they will form the proteins from amino to carboxyl group here will form the proteins amino to carboxyl okay amino to carboxyl so in this way proteins will be formed so this was the whole concept about the eukaryotic transcription and another difference between the eukaryotic transcription and prokaryotic transcription that as you see that in eukaryotic in, in prokaryotic transcription transcription and translation were happening 
coupled they were coupled they were happening simultaneously but why because there was no processing of messenger rna as you can say that here is a maturation here is a here is a here is a maturation happening here is a processing of pre messenger rna into mature messenger rna because information is fragmented into exons and introns in this case but in kind of prokaryotes there was no maturation there was no information fragmented into exons because introns was already missing so there is a no maturation there is a no processing so there they, they did not take no time so there is a no difference time between transcription and translation and the second thing as you can say that as you can see that in prokaryotes there is a no membranous nucleus there is a no membranous nucleus therefore no time for the messenger rna to move from uh, no time is taken from messenger rna to move from nucleus to cytoplasm but in case of eukaryotic transcription you see that here is a processing of messenger rna will happens after transcription first transcription will happens then after that this processing of messenger rna will happen it will take some time and you know that eukaryotes have membranous nucleus so this mature messenger rna will take the time to move outside from nucleus to cytoplasm so it will also take the time so after transcription these process will happen so it will take some time therefore there is a gap of time between transcription and translation so they, therefore transcription and translations are not coupled together they will not happen simultaneously with each other so it was about the eukaryotic transcription so first we will see the uh, concept of transcription factor that what are the transcription factors what are the sequence of uh, promoter and eukaryotic transcription that is about the hollness box and sort box then after that what uh, why i have used the word rna polymerase 2 after getting this concept we will see the transcription uh, eukaryotic transcription initiation after that eukaryotic transcription elongation after that eukaryotic transcription termination and after that we will talk about the some differences that are the, this one uh, eukaryotic transcription are monocystonic mean that only single gene is transcribed into a protein not a group of gene is transcribed into group of proteins in a, a, in case of that is in case of prokaryotes in prokaryotes many groups of genes are transcribed into proteins that is the polycystonic but eukaryotic transcriptions are only monocystonic only one gene is transcribed into uh, only one gene is transcribed into proteins and each gene is more widely spaced therefore each gene has its own promoter and its own terminator second concept that in eukaryotic transcription information is fragmented into exons and introns introns are non-coding regions therefore they have to be removed when these will be removed it will cause the maturation and after maturation no pre-messenger rna will be will become the mature messenger rna and then will, will mature messenger rna will move from uh, move outside from nucleus to cytoplasm and it will attach with the ribosome ribosome will translate the messenger rna from 5 prime to 3 prime and will form the proteins from amino to carboxyl end as like that okay the second difference is transcription and translation are not coupled as i have explained earlier that in eukaryotes there is a membranous nucleus and they are also happening the processing of messenger rna the processing of messenger rna is itself a complete topic we will discuss the processes processing of messenger rna in next lecture that how this processing happens we will see it in the next lecture but processing takes some time and uh, movement of the uh, messenger rna from nucleus to cytoplasm takes some time so there is a gap between transcription after transcription this process will happen so there is a gap between transcription and translation after these uh, first transcription will happen after that this process will happen then after that translation will happen so mean that there is a gap between transcription and translation therefore transcription and translation are not coupled in eukaryotes they are not taking they are not happened simultaneously they are not coupled because there is a gap difference between that so it was about that so in this way from dna double strand we will get first we will get the pre messenger rna then after that maturation will happen then after that we will get the mature messenger rna and from mature messenger rna will move outside and will bind with the ribosomes and ribosome will translate the messenger rna from 5 prime to 3 m 3 prime and will form the proteins from amino to carboxyl point so it was about the eukaryotic transcription the whole concept about the eukaryotic transcription so in the next lecture we will discuss that how this processing of pre-messenger happens and pre-messenger will become the mature messenger rna we will see this in the next lecture in detail until here if you have any question then you can comment me you can ask me any question then inshallah i will answer you so thank you so much guys in next lecture we will discuss about the processing of pre-messenger rna into mature messenger rna